네 안녕하세요 NJ 채널 이남주입니다 그 디지털 피처스 워크샵을 진행하는 과정에서 저희 파트너가 있는데 그 친구가 했던 워크샵을 이제 공유하려고 합니다 그 워크샵은 특별히 제가, 공, 제가 공유하고 싶은 큰 부분은 어디냐면 그 구글, 맵, 구글 맵에 있는 그 3D 지형 데이터랑 그 텍스처 데이터까지 어, 가져올 수 있는 뭐 FBX로 뽑을 수 있더라고요 보니까 그래서 뭐 라이노에도 쓸수 있고 유니티에도 쓸수 있고 뭐 마야나 맥스에도 쓸수 있지 않을까 해서 이제 그 친구가 한 워크샵인데 어 제가 물어봤어요. 좀 한국 친구들과 같이 공유하면 어떨까 그래서 오케이 해가지고 어 비디오를 이어서 드립니다. 그래서 학생분들이나 뭐 연구하시는 분들 뭐 디자인 하시는 분들한테 좀 도움이 될것 같아서 어 튜토리얼이 링크들을 제가 다 걸어 놓을 거고요. 그리고 워크샵 내용 중에서 한번 쭉 설명을 하고 중간에 이제 트러블 쉐링 같은 것도 좀 해주거든요. 그래서 한번 쭉 보시면은 그래도 좀 약간 손쉽게 그 3차원 지형 데이터랑 건물 데이터 3D 그리고 텍스처까지 가져올 수 있는 그런 방법입니다. 네, 보시죠. Okay, so um, if everybody is ready to go, I'm gonna go over the process. Um, although uh, it's adequately presented uh, in that rendering um, in that video and then more and more I'm impressed with Blender's capability for mapping. Uh, there's a couple of other really great plugins. One, um, it um, allows you to work with OSM data and uh, it just like more and more Blender GIS workflows are, are I think becoming more capable than Rhino one. So I think uh, as an architect, I end up using both uh, because it just becomes so uh, fast uh, for generating this. So to get started with this uh, workflow, uh, one thing you want to make sure is that you're using Chrome and the fact that your Chrome tabs are closed. So you cannot have instance of Chrome open. So you want to close everything. And then um, in the video, uh, it talks about generating a shortcut for Chrome. And basically, um, you want to have that handy and you want to have, as I said, Chrome closed, but then double click on the shortcut. And basically what this does is giving me a port um, uh, to work with. So it's giving me a PID. So you want to know what that number is. So it, it gives me a PID, which is 21192, 21192. I can either write it down or remember it. It doesn't go away, but I need to know this in order for me to actually uh, extract the, the map. So 21192. So while you have this open, you want to go ahead and launch render doc. So I'm going to open render doc and I need to connect to that PID. And render doc, I recommend using version 1.9. And here I'm going to go to file and tell it to inject into process, file inject into process. And I'm gonna look for that PID here. So that was 211, if for me, for you, it's gonna be different, 21192, right? So you can either scroll through it or find the number here. And that's what I want to connect to, right? So that's my Google Chrome uh, GPU. So if you double click it, um, then, uh, sorry, I shouldn't have double click. I'm gonna uh, open my render doc again. I should have just clicked once. Uh, I'm gonna open it again and go to file, uh, inject into process 2119. So select it. And while it's selected all the way down here, tell it to inject. So tell it to, um, inject and we should be ready to go. So all you need to do is to just tell it to inject. Then you want to wait here and go back to your Chrome and close your uh, PID. Now your Chrome is going to be launched again, but you're going to see that it's actually tracking your uh, activity in Chrome. So what I want to do next is to look for the, um, the, the map that I'm looking for. So in this case, uh, I'm going to go to Google Maps. And in Google Maps, uh, you want to work with the satellite uh, 
view sa satellite images and find where it is that you want to extract. So I can be working in LA, I can work in New York. Uh, I tend to like uh, New York for visualization because of the density of the buildings, it looks good, but I could also work anywhere. So perhaps select the city that you're uh, working with. So uh, in this case, I'm going to select New uh, Manhattan again. And you want to um, select the area that you want. So uh, the resolution of your mesh, the resolution of your buildings are going to be based on your zooming factor. Um, so I've done some studies and um, basically when you get close to about uh, 500 or so, even to 200s, you're able to get really, really high resolution. So you end up getting even, you know, every bush, every tree. So it's really um, uh, kind of uh, interesting how much detail you can extract from the uh, from the from the images. So around 500 or 200s, you're going to be able to construct a really, really good city. Now, the problem is because uh, basically this method is working with satellite tiles, obviously more zoomed in you are, then more of the importing and tiling you need to do. And basically this is working with um, whatever is capturing on your, on your screen. And let's say I'm going to go with something like this. So whatever your window is, um, just uh, select it, whatever is seen on your window, then go back to your render doc. And you want to then click on this option called uh, capture frames immediately. So you want to click on this, but then go back to your maps. And usually, like if you wiggle it a little bit, I've seen that actually that gives you better results. And what you're looking for is uh, a snapshot of basically what is being generated in your maps, right? Now, uh, there is one verification here because sometimes um, you need to redo this process if you don't have the, the depth channels from this, right? Depth channels is what's going to create the 3D. So after this, if I have something I'm going to check, I'm going to double click on this. And um, it is going to, uh, so it basically extracts the, um, extract the map that I'm looking at. And I do look at this and I see that I don't have the depth channels. So this should be uh, two and three this way. So I'm going to do this one more time to be able to see if I can get the depth. Uh, so usually you should get this in one or two. Actually, I'm going to, I believe this should be fine. So I'm going to extract it and uh, see the results. I might need to come back and do this one more time. So uh, if you only see one channel, uh, so usually that doesn't capture the depth, but depending on the area, you might have multiple channels. So um, after this process, what you want to do is you want to, right now, there is a, uh, the, the image that's being generated. We can then save it to a version that we can open in uh, in uh, in uh, Blender and look at the 3D model. So for Blender to open this model from this process, we want to go to File. We want to go to Save Capture As. So that's File Save Capture As. And I'm going to. Uh, I already have a folder here called Manhattan. I'm gonna give it today's name. Uh, Today's date, June 29th, and ultimately select it, give it a name. I'm going to say Manhattan, uh, June 29th, and you want to save this as RDC model. So RDC is actually the only option it gives you, but that's the file type that we're going to be needing to open in Blender. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go and open Blender. And once you open the Blender, the step before this, you want to make sure that you have the plugin installed, uh, which goes over it in the beginning of video. You install uh, plugins basically under 
edit, you go to preferences, and all the plugins, they would be installed as zip file on their add-ons. So in this case, um, this specific, um, um, you should be able to, once you install it, you could see it as your checked options. So to import the model uh, in Blender, you want to go to File, you want to go to Import, and you want to select the RDC file, which is Google Maps Capture default uh, file format that Blender already recognizes. And once you set the file to that RDC format, uh, go ahead and, and uh, find the 3D um, model that you've captured. In this case, I have it in a folder called Manhattan on the 29th, and I'm going to go up. Yeah. What is it? Uh, go up the uh, folder because you didn't save the uh, file. Oh. Sorry. Just go to Manhattan folder and you can see the file that you just captured. Give me a second, file, import, RDC. And desktop. Yeah, let me just go here. Manhattan, oh yeah, sorry, it's here. Yeah. Uh, there we go, thank you. And uh, why is it invalid? Oh, okay. I'm gonna open another one. Uh, it should be. Takes two seconds. Takes a few seconds for it to load. Mm -hmm. And it should center it in the view. So I'll give it a minute. It should load, and you know, Blender comes with a generic box, a camera, and a light. And once you import the model, um, initially you're not going to see the texture, but if you go to your uh, viewport shading, you should see the model with texture. So um, I'm going to repeat this one more time. Um, when I'm capturing this, this should actually give me channel two and channel three. So um, I didn't redo that part. So that's why I wasn't able to open this, but this is some one that I did previously. And that's the one that's imported in uh, Unity. Uh, but uh, that is ultimately the workflow. I'm gonna try this uh, one more time. Uh, and I encourage you to just try this and just try a different city, a different area. And let's think about this as um, the data that you want to match, right? So in this case, it could be uh, the city you're in, or uh, and if you want to try New York, I'm going to try this one more time. Uh, and I'm going to right click and delete this. And what you want to make sure is that in, yeah, you're in map view, that's fine. Here. I'm going to go back to um, file uh, inject into process uh, that's already set up. So I can just do capture frames immediately. Go back here. Usually I move it a little bit. It generates another one. Uh, and it seems like it also didn't do it again. Is anybody able to get the here where it says targets two and targets three? Of course, these things, uh, when you want to do a demo, it doesn't work. But um, let me see, I'm going to just restart this. Uh, that's the key this time, 21884. Jacked 
Google Maps, uh, if you have its location saved, let me try Los Angeles this time. Should be fine. Back to here. Capture frames. Okay, there we go. So this should work this time because not only it gives me the targets, but it also says plus depth. And that's what we need for us to extract the 3D. So if it doesn't have the depth, so that's basically the, the band of the satellite that is able to then be uh, interpolated as depth, then we're not able to see the texture. Um, and sometimes, you know, I have to do it a couple of times. Um, often it works the first time, but obviously not today. And I'm going to save this again, going to go to file, um, uh, save capture as. Um, I'm going to make a new folder for Los Angeles. And Los Angeles. And save it as RDC, save. And if I go back to Blender, Go to File, Import, RDC, and find the Los Angeles one. Import. There it is, right? So this time, because I had depth, then I was able to do this. So what I exported was from a thousand feet up. So allowed me to get a larger area, but obviously it's not as high res. So if I want to get a more of a high res, then I would just zoom in and do this in parts. What you're going to find is that actually these are tiles and the way that layers and blenders a blender is set up, it comes in as tiles. Um, and basically each tile is going to have its own um, texture map that then eventually when you're exporting, let's say as FBX, uh, this is uh, something that we need to package before exporting. Um, so does everybody have a city that you can work with and import into Unity? Anybody has an interesting uh, city to share? I'm curious to see what this looks like in other cities, if the resolution is good. Okay. Um, all right, to uh, export this um, uh, as FBX for Unity, um, the best way is to, uh, well, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, by default, um, when you're uh, exporting for Unity, usually from Blender, you can go with FBX, or, which is Motion Builder uh, format, or with uh, OBJ. Uh, when you're exporting as OBJ, then uh, basically uh, what you also have generated is an MTL file, right? Your material file. Um, I generally 
go with FBX as, um, as a default. It tends to work well, and um, especially for anything between Rhino and Unity, Maya Unity and Blender and Unity. I wonder if anybody has other preferences. Um, but uh, to export this um, with texture, there's um, one step that we need to do. Uh, so if you go to your file and if you go to your uh, export, uh, FBX is going to be one of the options that we uh, see here. And um, if we were to export this um, as is, and I'm going to save this into the same Los Angeles uh, folder that I have here. Uh, if I then open this, um, let's say Los Angeles one, if I just export this as is, I'm not actually going to get all the uh, all the textures associated with this. Mm -hmm. So um, what you could do is um, before you export to go up here where it says path mode, and instead of just setting this up to auto, you want to set this up to this option called copy. Uh, so you want to also click on this option here, which says embed textures. So, so drop down from auto, change that to copy, and you want to click on this option that says embed textures. Uh, additionally, there's other features that you can change here. So for instance, in this case, I don't really have an animation, but let's say if you do any animation in Blender, you could definitely also bake, but that's not necessary. The other thing is your uh, Y and Z up. We talked about this yesterday when you're working with modeling um, environments um, that are using um, X, Y, Z in a traditional way, your Z is going to be up. But any game engine or any, let's say, simulation engine, so Blender falls in between, I would say, both. But in terms of coordinates, um, also, uh, it can be understood that way. So I would just keep this as is, and that should be it. And we can just tell it to export FBX. And that should be um, enough for us to be able to then relink re the model in Unity. So I'm going to wait for everybody to export something. Any questions so far? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, may I share my screen? Yes. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the tutorial has um, yeah and can the process but yeah here i don't have so i have a question uh because you have your uh from open right so it does you need to for this to work your you actually need to have your all your browser closed so what you can do is close your browser your chrome browser this one uh, no, you're, uh, so basically, since you have uh, Chrome open, mm -hmm. then you're not able to, uh, yeah, do that, yeah. because you need to basically change the mode. Right, right now, uh, close the render doc again. And yeah, just close it here, X out of it. Great. So now, uh, launch the shortcut of your Chrome. Um, so uh, perhaps you created on your desktop, like the- I, I have created this one. Perfect, yeah, double click. Just for your yeah. information, according to our chatting room, um, uh, Bunzan uh, said that like a version 1.9 is better than you know, version 1.14. So he said like, don't use the version. One. Yeah, I got the same problem previously. So I I, I uninstalled the version 1.14 and I installed the 1.9 instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's also I said that in um in Discord. So uh, you wanna have that um uh, 1.9. Okay. But um, yeah, so please un uninstall the version 1.14. Uh got it. Uh yeah, so in theory, after this process, then if you go to render doc, you should do that. But then I agree that just uninstall this version and do 1.9. Uh, 
Uh, let me send you a link to 1.9. Um, one minute. Uh, after then you do uh, inject, um, my Chrome is still like all, all white, like my Chrome, Chrome window. Uh, is there anything they should do to kind of kickstart uh, Chrome again so that I can- Yeah, can I see that? Can I see- uh, Yes, sure. Uh, so I um, so if you go to um, for the version, if you guys go to renderdoc uh, org slash build, you'll see one point nine there and can just download that. I want to go ahead. Yeah, so um, I got to here and I, I did the injection. Uh, so it says connection status established. Um, and so if you go to uh, so you then launch Chrome after or before? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And every, yeah. Let's try one more time. Sorry, can you close that render doc and then close Chrome? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, do you have any other Chrome instance open? No, you don't. No, no, they're all closed. Okay. Yeah. So then but, run the yeah. Yeah, I just okay. write down this number. Great. So one eight nine four two. Um, and then. Uh, Render dog. Fire inject. inject. One eight nine four two. One eight nine eight nine. There you go. Yeah. Click on that and then tell it to inject. Then uh, go to your um, uh, Chrome and close where it says OK. Just OK that. There you go. So close this one? Yeah. And ah, right. there you go. Mm. Okay. Awesome. And, uh, Google Maps. So we are trying to basically hack. Oh yeah, this is this is like hardcore. I think the Google Map teams don't like this video. <laughs> I really don't think so, but the result is so good. <laughs> right. And uh, you want to be in satellite view? I mean, Australia. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Uh, and yeah, that's good. So right now, you're this is going to be really high res, so that's good. You can try this. So then go to render doc, tell it to capture uh, capture frames immediately, and then go to your Google Maps and yeah, pan pan a little bit. Yeah, it's it's it, 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 I find that, okay, yeah. So I find the panning to work with depth, but I can double click and let's just hope that it got the depth. Uh, yeah, you should be good. So right now awesome. you can go to file uh -huh. and save capture as. And um, uh, it's better to make a folder for this. Um, yeah. So, because um, if the texture packing doesn't work, we can also from um, Blender, we can extract the textures in the same folder. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And that's it. Same. Awesome. Um, Thank you. Yeah, if you open Blender, then uh, it should uh, yeah work. You just need to change your mode to a shaded mode, which is yeah. Uh, when yeah, you yeah. open, it's yeah. Right. Um, just need to install.
all the way down. RDC. Uh, sorry, just a general question. Uh, yeah, um, if I um, let's say I want like a high resolution model, uh, mm -hmm. but I can't take like a snapshot big enough. Uh, mm -hmm. So if I take multiple snapshots, when it mm -hmm. exports, are these snapshots geolocated so that the tiles fall in place, or you have to compose them? Yeah, great question. Let me show you an example. Um, so. I'm going to open an example. So we're working on this uh, project right now for um, Venice Biennale. And uh, so this project is looking at the uh, uh, Broadway as a cross section of New York. So we had to get like super high res uh, street view, front view resolution. And uh, this is actually how uh, I came across this workflow because uh, even like with street view with a certain resolution, it's good enough. So uh, the, the answer is that, um, you no, know, these do not have an awareness of uh, longitude and latitude. So they don't have a projection plane unless you import them all at once. So what Blender does, it takes the centroid of all the tiles and it just centers it to your window. That's why like no matter how big or small you import this, you always end up where the camera focus is, right? But it's actually not a very difficult process because these tiles are, you know, they're meshes, they have vertices, so you can easily just tile them together. I want to just um, walk you through a couple of other things. We were doing these uh, assessments um, and this was about uh, resolution. So these are different zooming factors. So with um, so this is a zooming factor of uh, um, 100, uh, 200, sorry. So these are all 200 um, uh, zooming factors, but uh, with uh, within uh, Google Maps, what it does, it, it, it creates like 1,500, uh, 200 and then 100. And within 200 is where we got the best result for an entire city. But these are number of scrolls. So, uh, but uh, I mean, it, it, it's really, really uh, great. And with 100, you even have more resolution. So you're able to get like, you know, any, every street level detail. But obviously with, um, with this process, uh, there's things that are missing. So we were working on uh, Empire State and we realized that the top of Empire State was missing. So we had to kind of give it a haircut um, with a little bit of a texture. And at the same time, and it's great, right? So you just add actually to the model. And at the same time, um, because the file size becomes quite large, so this entire Manhattan, um, and we started to, uh, it was about like one and a half gigabytes. Uh, mm -hmm. So when we did it in parts, then you always need to make sure that you're linking textures back. But anyways, I highly recommend this workflow as a, as a, as a process. No, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so uh, going back to um, this, I hope everybody has um, something to uh, work with. And uh, let me just share. Uh, uh, a code with you and we're going to be able to just open and um, 